Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service on the 8th of May. This is VE Day and we come to both celebrate and commemorate on this day. We have a short act of worship with a reflection and then I invite you to join in the silence that will be going on around our country for two minutes at 11 o'clock. As we remember both this day as being a day of freedom for our continent, as we also remember the huge loss of life from this war. So let's just take a moment of quiet. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God has been our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Dear friends, we come together on this day to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sound of war fell silent on this continent. We come together, conscious of our need for God's forgiveness, for the sin and the desire to dominate others that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. As we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny. So we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. We gather together joyfully today as those who gathered on that first victory day, glad of each other's company and grateful for the laughter and love that follows times of sadness and loss. We cannot come together in person due to our country's unwell circumstance at this time. We can still gather together with one heart and with one mind. Above all things, let us pray that God's will may be done on earth as in heaven. As we join our voices with Russ and Nicky's as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
God, His Son, not sparing, send Him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Our readings from John chapter 15 verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. And so let's respond together to the reading that we've just heard from John as we use some words from Psalm 84 and Psalm 89. Please join in the words on the screen. Your salvation is near to those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met each other. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Your salvation is near to those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. 
Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Your salvation is near to those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. And so let us pray. Loving God, as we think on the words of John, the words that we hear so often at remembrance occasions, we give thanks for those that have given their lives in service of us. As we think on these words this morning, open our hearts and minds to hear your word for us. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Reverend Gordon Limbrick is one of our retired clergy who serve in our area and he's also the Royal British Legion Chaplain. He's written our service sheets this week that go out on a Sunday to people that don't have internet access. And with his permission, I use some of his material today, as well as some of my own. And you won't be surprised to know that today is a significant day. It's only two years ago, in 2018, that we commemorated 100 years since the end of World War I. And today we come to celebrate and commemorate the end of World War II in Europe. We know that this was not the actual end of the war, but we come to commemorate the many who gave their lives in service of our country. As you approach times like this, you get to know more about the events. I've heard stories from people that lived through these events. You get to see some of the awful statistics that these wars bring. These may not be the most accurate statistics, but they're what I could find. And they tell me that 70 to 85 million people died in what has been one of the deadliest conflicts in military history. This was around 3% of the world's population in 1940. In the UK, our military deaths were 383,700 people. Civilian deaths were 67,200 people. And military wounded were 376,239. That is only from the UK. The figures around the world obviously add up to a much, much greater figure. And we know the loss of life and the change of life for people in so many ways. Lives were changed in so many ways. And so I guess that 75 years ago, people came to this day with a mix of feelings, with joy that at last we've got to the end of this conflict, but also a real sorrow for the lives that have been lost and the lives that have been changed during this battle. The loss must have been palpable everywhere, including here in our own village of Yaxley. Our church and our cemetery have war memorials that commemorate those that died from our area. There'll be people all over the country remembering the people from their areas today that died. Lives would have been changed here in this place. But also people found hope at this time as they celebrated the end of the Second World War in Europe. The hope that this would never happen again. As human beings, we need to have hope. It's an essential for life. Of course, we know that in our remembering today, we're not just remembering those brave men and women who fought and lost, lost their lives in the Second World War. We remember the loss of lives in wars before that, and the loss of lives in wars since that, and the loss of lives in wars that still rage on today. Men and women in our armed forces continue to give their lives in service for this country and for us. I imagine that their hope is that their efforts will allow us to live freely, to make choices and to live well and in freedom. Our Gospel reading this morning is one that I always find incredibly poignant. It's one that I often choose on Remembrance Sunday because of what it says. It says, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's, one's life for one's friend. Those that went to war did this for us, for the world that we live in today, 
a world that perhaps at present seems incredibly mixed up and frightening. But we do have our lives. We do have our freedom, even though at present some people may feel very constrained. But we have our lives through the service and sacrifice of others. We may know their names from our war memorials, but we don't necessarily know those people. This reading, of course, is not just talking about the context of war. Indeed, this is not the focus or the content of the context at all at this point, other than there being a spiritual battle. A battle that is looking ahead to the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that we've just remembered a few weeks ago in our Easter season. Jesus who died on that first Good Friday for us to bring us the good news that we have in our Bible today. Jesus came to bring hope to our world, to give you and me hope through his death. He gave us a new start and a new relationship with God. So what is hope and why do we need hope? Why is it so important enough to fight wars for? Why was it important enough that God sent his own son into the world to bring us hope? The dictionary defines hope as a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. It's hard to actually define, but words such as aspiration, desire, wish, expectation, ambition, aim, plan and dream all come into this. Perhaps words such as longing, yearning, craving and hankering. And that list can go on as we grapple to understand what it is. Hope gives us ground for believing that something else will be different, that something good will happen. And it gives us an optimism, optimism for the future. We perhaps need hope even more today not more than those war times, but perhaps more than we in my generation and in our lives have needed. As we hear the stories from around the world of the coronavirus, as we know the death toll in our country being in the thousands, as people know friends and loved ones who have died through this, we need hope today. We need hope that God is in control of this situation. Gordon, in his writing for Sunday, has called this time World War Three. We're in a huge battle against a virus that we cannot even see other than through a microscope. But there is still hope. There is still life. And there is still that love that talks about laying down your life. And we can perhaps think about our key workers today. Those people on the very front lines of service. Those people nursing our loved ones those people driving lorries to bring food to us, those people delivering our posts so that we can communicate with one another, those people farming in our fields so that we can have food. There are so many people putting their lives at risk for us and we give thanks today for each and every one of those, as well as each and every person who gave their lives in the wars that we think about today and in particularly our Second World War. Sometimes what begins as a belief ends in hope. And we have that hope today, for our life today, for those that we love today, for the people that we know today, for our country and for our world today. In our Bible reading today, we are offered other hopes in and through God. Hopes that there is something else, something more than just our day-to-day -day lives that these lives were not lost in vain because God cares about each and every individu individual that he has made. Each of us is offered hope today in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of fear. As we remember the horror and the cost of wars fought for our freedom, as we face a world with uncertainty all around, we hope for a time when war cease. We hope for a time when coronavirus is no more. We hope for peace in our own lives. 
we can put our trust in God. A God who loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to live and die amongst us. To show us that love, to show us that care. We can hold that hope today. That hope that God gave us through his great love of his son. We can hang on to that love and still know that hope alive and well in us and in our world today. The hope before us in Jesus Christ, the love in our God. So today, whatever you are feeling, whatever your memories are of the war, whatever your feelings are about the present time, can I encourage you to trust and hope in a God who cares about you. Amen. And so let us pray and let's just take a moment of quiet. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service, particularly in the Second World War, whose sacrifice brought victory in Europe. As we honour their courage and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. O Lord God of hosts, stretch forth, we pray, your mighty arm to strengthen and protect our service men and women. Support them in times of conflict. In their rest and training, keep them safe from all evil. Endue them with courage and loyalty and grant that in all things they may serve without reproach. And we pray for peace in our own world. O God, who would fold both heaven and earth into a single peace, the design of your great love lighten upon the waste of our sorrows. Give us peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our dwellings and peace in our hearts. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Father, we lift to you those places today where war still rages, where people offer their life again in service of their country. We pray that we will really know what peace is, that we will hold on to the hope that we have in you. That hope may burn brightly today as we remember the end of the Second World War. As we sit in this time, we pray for our frontline workers. We pray for safety for them. We thank them for all that they are offering in service of us. And we thank you that though we can't gather together today, we can still meet in our hearts and in our minds to remember the service of those today, those that we clap for every Thursday. And at the same time, we remember those that lost their lives those that lost their lives in that battle that raged over 75 years ago. Keep these people in our hearts and our minds to remind us how important peace is and help us to hold on to the hope that we have in you through the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so in an act of commitment, let us pledge ourselves anew to peace, to having that hope within us. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. So I invite you to join in the words on the screen. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, 
for the relief of want and suffering, for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit, give us your wisdom, give us courage, give us hope and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Our Collect for Peace Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquillity your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray for our Sovereign, our Queen who has seen so many things, and our Queen who shows her faith and talks about her faith readily in all that she does. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so can I encourage you, if you're able, to stand for the National Anthem. of worship, of celebration and commemoration on this VE Day in 2020. Can I invite you at 11 o'clock to maintain two minutes of silence as we remember those who have lost their lives, particularly in the Second World War, and maybe if you know who those people are, for those people that fought from Yaxley, but particularly remember them this morning. And so a final blessing. God grant to the living grace the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all people, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. And so we go into our final hymn. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. <laughs> 